Need to know how to create Facebook posts that get shared? I tell ya, comments are powerful, but nothing cuts through the dreaded Facebook algorithm like shares. Today we'll talk quickly about the psychology of what gets posts shared, and how I've used these things to get tons of organic reach for my agency clients. All right, let's get into it. Hey, busy people, welcome to five minute social media. If you have had figure out my social media on your to-do list forever, for a long time, but it just keeps getting shoved down the to-do list because you're overwhelmed, you don't know where to start, you're in a great place. Every week we put out a quick video to help you with a different piece of your digital marketing strategy. If that sounds like something you could benefit from, take a second, hit subscribe, click that bell, and that way you'll be notified whenever a new video comes out. My name is Jerry Potter. Yes, it rhymes with the boy wizard and we can connect on social media at Mr. Jerry Potter. Today, we're talking about how to create content that gets shares. Sharing is the ultimate when it comes to reaching more people with your social media content. And social media algorithms love shares. And this goes beyond Facebook as well. Like on Instagram, if somebody shares your post via DM or into their story, that helps you a lot to reach more people. Three things I'm gonna cover today. One, what to keep in mind when you're creating your posts so that you get more shares with your content. Two, I'm gonna share a few posts that I've done for agency clients that have got a ton of shares and talk about why those ones worked in particular. And third, three easy things you can do after your post is up to get more shares. Now, if you're already about to turn this video off, listen to this one thing. The one thing to keep in mind when you're creating content and creating posts is to create something that causes an emotion in somebody. When somebody feels an emotion from your post, that is the number one indicator that they're going to share it. There's nothing more powerful than emotions and they are contagious, okay? Now let's unpack that a bit here. An emotion can be anything anyone feels. So making them laugh, is great, happy, sad, patriotic, even angry counts as an emotion. If you make somebody feel something, nostalgia counts as an emotion. Now, even though sadness and anger are emotions and they can lead to shares, the University of Pennsylvania did a big study and they found that positive content got way more shares than negative content. Most of us don't wanna share doom and gloom with our friends and family. But if that makes sense for your brand, people will share things that make them upset and angry. Basically, the stronger the emotion they feel, the more likely they are to share it. So how do people decide what to share? Well, most people are motivated to share based on their networks online. Who are their friends and family? Who are they going to be sharing with? The New York Times did a massive study about why people share content, and these were the top five reasons people share content on social media. Number one, they wanted to better the lives of others. Whether it was a motivational quote or something like that, they wanted to improve the lives of their friends and family by sharing. Number two, they want to spread the word of something they believe in. This could be a political thing. This could be a charity thing. Anything that they believe in, by sharing it, it's part of their identity. Number three, they share because they like the idea of having people comment and engage. So they share something because they think their audience, and again, I'm talking about an individual, their friends and family will engage with it. Number four, they wanna grow and nourish relationships. This again comes down, I think, to their identity to an extent. Like you share something that you're into, then other people realize you're into it, and they go, oh, I didn't know you were into that, I'm into that. Let's have coffee, let's talk, let's talk in the comments section. And number five kind of sums it up, they want the content to reflect their online identity. So how do you create more shareable content? Well, first of all, try and make it fit into one of these three categories. They did a huge UCLA study and the majority of things that get shared online fit into one of these three categories. Number one, utility. We like to share things that we think will be useful or helpful to other people. Life hacks is a huge one of these. Number two type of content people share, entertainment. Obviously, we all love to be entertained, so if we see something that makes us really happy or amused or something from a reality show or makes us laugh, we wanna share it for other people to feel that same thing that we felt. And the third category of most shared content is inspiration. Things that inspire us are very shareable. And it's not just inspirational quotes, like that's where my mind went first. It could be an inspirational story, any number of things. Now keep in mind as you're trying to create shareable content for your brand, even if you look at some of the biggest brands that get the most shares, like a Buzzfeed, for example, every post doesn't get 500 shares or whatever it might be. Only some of them really take off like that. So for you, don't focus on trying to create 30 pieces of shareable content a month. You'd be better off focusing on trying to create one or two and going from there. I wanted to share a few posts that I've done for clients that have gotten a ton of shares and just kind of talk about why I think they worked 
Although the third one was a bit of a mystery. So I'll show you that one here in just a second. This first one was right after the Seattle Seahawks had gotten bounced from the playoffs. And I put this up for a sports bar tavern. You know, I think it caused an emotion for people because it reflected the identity of them in that moment. The fans were devastated, but at the same time, really happy with the way the season came out. And because of that, again, caused an emotion, reflected how they felt, and reflected their online identity, and let others know how they were feeling, it got shared 271 times. This next one was for a collision center, and uh, this is a little simpler, didn't have to be topical or anything like that. It caused an emotion, in this case, nostalgia, perhaps joy, seeing a photo of that car. This was not a special photo, this was just a stock photo that I found and we put up. And uh, obviously, it did really well. It got 113 shares. And the last one, honestly, a bit of a mystery. This was for a car dealership, and the air show was coming up, including the Navy's Blue Angels. And uh, it caused an emotion of some sort. I don't know. It could have been some patriotism for people maybe in the Navy, or it could have just been the emotion of cool jets. And uh, it got 46 shares. So a few examples there of posts that have gotten shares and why, based on the psychology that we just talked about. I hope those examples were helpful. And let me just say, those were some that did really well. I create stuff that does not do well all the time, too. It's definitely an art to get it to go, and it doesn't always get shared. All right, last thing. Your post is up. You feel like you should be getting more shares. What can you do now? Three things you can do to get more shares once it's already up. One... Ask people to share it, not in the posts. Facebook doesn't like it when you use engagement bait language like share if you love puppies too, but you could DM a few key friends or people that you know have a good following that would be interested in that anyway. Think about the type of people you ask. Say, hey, would you mind sharing this and adding a thoughtful comment to the top? Nothing wrong with doing that. A few of those can really get a post going. Number two, share it yourself. If it's on your business page, share it to your personal page and add a comment to it. Share it in some Facebook groups. Every time you share it, it increases the little number at the bottom of the post says three shares. If somebody sees a post and it already says three shares, that's sort of a psychological nudge of maybe you want to share this too, huh? Huh? Terrible winker. And number three, get people to tag friends in the comments. Uh, You might start this on your own, like you put something up on your business page, and then you go down to the comments with your personal page and say, hey, Sarah, thought you might like this too. And then she comes and checks it out, and then maybe she shares it. You're just getting new people to the post by tagging them. Again, don't spam your friends too much. This is all to be done within reason. But every little bit helps if you have the time. All right, best of luck with getting more shares on Facebook. Do not be discouraged. Most things are not going to go crazy and get shared, but every little bit helps. And of course, create the best content that you can. That's also the ultimate to getting shares. Thank you so much for watching. If you have more questions about this, you can drop them in the comments or join us in our free Facebook group. Just search 5-Minute Social Media on Facebook. If you like this video, give it a like, hit subscribe. You're not only supporting me, but also my two tiny superheroes at home.